What's up, everybody? Another week, another AEW Dynamite by us. Recap by us, the Beach Blasters. June 4th, 2021. How you doing, my friend? Pretty good. I cannot believe it's June. Let alone June 4th. Jeez. Yeah. Half a, by, man. Pretty much half a year gone by. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. insane. It is. I mean, it's been oh. like a... It's been like a whole year since we saw the Black Widow movie. It's insane, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we talking about the same thing? We're talking about the Black Widow trailer, right? It's been a year since we saw the Black Widow trailer. No, no, right? I, I saw the movie last year. I could have sworn, you know. In the theater, all my friends. Oh, now I know we're talking about two different things. So anyway... Obviously, that happened in an alternate reality, mm. which is what I felt yes. about this dynamite tonight. What did you think about this dynamite tonight? For a follow-up show from a pay-per-view, it was not that great. This was... I, I don't want to say it was not great, but this was a weird-ass show. We'll get into it, but uh, this just was... There were so many times when I was just like, am I... Am I really watching this, or am I hallucinating? What is going on? You know, you have way more experience watching wrestling than I do, so I would love to hear it, it, your take on this. It has nothing you know? to do with that, but we'll get into it. Shall we just, shall we just jump yeah. into it then? So, yes. they announced that John Moxley is hurt, and, the, and that the, Bucks, the Young Bucks attacked Ray Phoenix in the back earlier, and he is out, and that Brandon Cutler... Uh, he filmed it, so I guess maybe we'll see it on BTE or something. And they come out. Kazarian attacks Nakazawa and then runs off while the Good Brothers chase him. So, by the way, it's uh, Pac and the Joker versus the Young Bucks. Yeah, interesting. The Joker made it out of uh, made it out of the comics here to yeah. to decide to wrestle in well, AEW for a night. Well, Penta in his Joker outfit, which actually looks pretty damn badass. But... Yeah. He 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 makes it work. Uh, he makes pretty much anything work, and uh, it's a nice touch. He looks pretty scary to me. And oh yeah, the fans were there. Yeah, that was cool. I know, full house. Well, I honestly don't know if it was a sold out crowd, but I so mean, the it story, cool me. the story of the night for me, this crowd sucked. They <laughs> totally like, they totally took me out of this show. Like they just really? did not give a shit about this show. We'll talk. I'll talk about it more. But what did you think about this match, Pack and the Pack and Penta versus the Young Bucks? This is a great match, you know. And I don't expect anything less from these guys. Uh, I honestly didn't know this was going to be a match tonight. This should have been the main event, honestly. I mean, uh, seriously, this should have uh, been the main event. You, you don't think so? No, this should have been the main event. I, oh, I agree. Okay. Yeah. Um, was it for the belt? It was right. I didn't hear. Them was it? I didn't. I didn't hear them say either way. But yeah, which was odd. I was like, nobody's announced it either way. If this is for the belt or not, and then it was just over, which is fine. But um, one thing I will say is that Death Triangle. Uh, how do I put this? Like, has a lot of interesting matchups between the three of them. I mean, team makeups between the three of them. Let's put it that way. Uh, this was a completely different, you know, team than when Pac is with Phoenix or Phoenix is with Penta. Yeah. This was just a hard hitting, you know, in your face team. I mean, there were some high flying moves and stuff, but it was just straight up like, you know, beat down style wrestling from them. And it was awesome. I loved it. Uh, it was a nice counter to what the Young Bucks usually do. So, so this, uh, I thought this was really good until the end. We'll get to that. Mm. But, uh. So they talk about so JR is bitching about what the Young Bucks did to John Moxley, as in they won the match. Him and Eddie at double or nothing. But apparently doing four BTE triggers like some hideous thing. And then Callus says, It wasn't hideous, JR. It was legendary. <laughs> so the story, you know, the Bucks are insufferable pricks, and in the theme of this night. Everybody, there's at least one person who landed on their freaking head in every match. And in this one, it yeah. was in 
Pac did a German suplex on Nick, and he landed right on his head. And so, like you said, they had a lot of crazy moves. Typical what you expect out of Pac, Penta, and the Young Bucks. So, uh, the finish comes... Uh, sorry. Uh, Penta hits the package pile driver. Pac hits a black arrow, but then Mac breaks it up. Pat goes up, and then Brandon Cutler hits him with the camera for interference. Nick pins Pack. So that's why I said this match was great until the end, because interference again on AEW. And if you've watched Double or Nothing, like almost every, I think there was like one match that didn't have interference. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, like all. It. Go ahead. Like always, what happens after the match is what's important. The Bucks attack after, and they rip off Penta's real mask. Oh, by the way, they tried to rip off. Nick tried to rip off Penta's mask in the match, in the match, but he had another one on underneath. So they tr- they rip up his mask for real. They're gonna go for BTE trigger, but then Eddie came out. Eddie Kingston comes out straight from his pickup basketball game. And then he th- he thwarts the Bucks, and then Eddie and Penta kind of look at each other, acknowledging their old friendship. So, I mean, like I'm not trying to rag on what Eddie Kingston was wearing; it just looked like he came from playing basketball. It did. It did. It. It was a very, very, uh, <laughs> very good observation on that part. It looked like he just came from the courts. Yeah. So, I mean, nothing wrong with that. I just thought it was funny. Funny. It was definitely wasn't ring gear. That's for sure. Well. Eddie has kind of an unorthodox ring gear too, so yeah, he could have gone for ring gear. So another AEW match that ends with, yeah, you know, I know we've talked about this many times, and it, it's true though. It's not something that's really a nitpick. This is what AEW is doing. It's not something that we're just like, uh, you know, opinionated on. It's like, well, do you have some of the best wrestlers in the world, right? And yet you do these things and it just takes away so often like i get it sometimes it needs to happen just to move the stories forward just to prove who the heel is whatever but if you're gonna end three quarters of your matches on interference what difference does it make how good anybody is right because it's going to be the interference that matters so yeah i didn't like the end either so i have i have a little something i want to say about that after the recap of the next match but up next Mm. Giovanni's out there. He brings out Mark Henry, and the crowd's like, yay. And he's here to turn the screws. The screws. And Shivani asks him, will he wrestle? And he says he's not going to say yes, but he's got a lot left in the tank. And then Vicky Guerrero comes out, and she tells Mark Henry and Shivani, leave. Get out of here. And then they leave. <laughs> I, was like, I, know, I was like, what? It's <laughs> like, okay. When did she have the authority to tell like them actual AEW employees? I mean, he's... Leave? He's the world's strongest man, and then some some lady comes out and she tells him to beat it, and he's just like, Treat. "All right, yeah. I'm out of here." But she introduces Andrade El Idolo, and he's in the di- and what is he doing in the Dynamite Zone? I wonder. <laughs> but he says he's going to be the new face of AEW, and I've gone on many many times about ex WWE guys coming in, but this is one I'm not going to complain about. Because if you've ever seen this dude wrestle, this dude was born to be a professional wrestler. You know, there's some people who are just like, you watch them and they're good because you know they've worked hard. This guy looks like a fish in water when he wrestles. I'm all for it. This guy is awesome. Awesome. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I was actually going to ask you, I don't know much beyond the backstory that he was in WWE. I've seen some clips, but I've never really followed him in any capacity so that's good to know i mean tell me if you heard this one before he was great in nxt he went up to the main roster and they did jack shit with him unfortunately many times yeah so i'm i'm excited for him i he's tremendous so cody and lee johnson versus qt marshall and anthony (laughs) agogo and hold on hold on i'm gonna call it your match of the night right no this wasn't my match in the night. This was my match of like the century? No, it was my match of <laughs> that 5 minutes that was on, I guess. 
<laughs> what what do you think of this match? I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I think you'll be surprised. I actually thought it was pretty good. It was, you know, it was okay. Like it just was like I actually liked it. I I can't believe I'm saying this. Like, it, just, it wasn't it, like my match of the night, but out yeah. of the four competitors, the only one I care about is Cody. Lee yeah. Lee Johnson, yeah. they've treated kind of as like a loser. QT is just kind of like who cares, and a go go, he's just. He's, I mean, like he's cool. He's got a really good presence, really good character, and all that. But he's not a he's not a good wrestler yet, and that's not his fault. The dude's inexperienced, so I don't really care about him yet. I, so it's not the kind of wrestling I like. So whatever. So let's just. I was just more apathetic about it than anything else. But it was okay. There was nothing wrong with it. Anything yeah. else you you got? I uh. No, I was actually surprised at how how well it flowed, I guess. I actually liked it, to be honest with you. And I had really low expectations. Maybe that's why I liked it so much. Yeah. I, um, I gotta say, though, I'm not too crazy about the storyline continuing. Yeah. So, the end of the match is Aaron Solo, get this, he distracts the ref for interference. A go-go clocks Cody while he was setting up for the crossroads. And the bad guys win. So, like I said, my interference speech. This is just what AEW is. I'm tired of bitching and I'm tired of complaining about it. I'll still mention it, but I'm done. I'm done complaining about it. It's the scorpion and the toad, right? You can't get mad at the scorpion for stinging. That's what he is. This is just what AEW is. This is just, this is just how they operate. They, they're the interference for the wind company. So, whatever, ready. I let it go. Done. That's how I feel. I'm still pissed about it, but I'm not going to complain about it anymore. That makes sense. Get it. I get it. So, anything you want to add about that match before we move on? Uh, no, no. I think you, I think you about I think we about wrapped it up in the two minutes we talked about it. Okay, so the inner circle comes out, and so you remember last week when they were complaining uh, when I complained about how like they're always showing people who are singing incorrectly or singing way like not with everybody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, this what that's way better because this week all they did is keep showing people not singing. Right? Didn't you notice that? They're like cut to a camera and it's like it's like what have I become? And then like the peop like the people there on the camera on they're just like it's like oh my god, this looks so crappy. Nobody they all they did is keep showing people not singing along. This was terrible. Is it just me or was the camera work a little off tonight too? You didn't feel that way? No, it was way. I I well maybe, but I just noticed the this crowd was terrible it's like they were all like you know the family of the wrestlers who actually don't care about their their jobs like i don't care about wrestling but cousin joey got us tickets so here we go you know that's what it felt like yeah i mean there were times where the crowd was kind of out of it maybe i don't know maybe it was a smaller crowd than i thought I, i don't know this crowd just wasn't having it except for one part we'll talk about that but everyone got a free stadium stampede winner shirt, so I guess that they were kind of happy about that. And yeah, a real stadium stampede victory shirt. <laughs> we got, we got the one last year. That's that was pretty real to me. <laughs> and speaking of shirts, what have you got on there? I have my future champion Luchasaurus. And on Jungle Boy June twenty sixth, he's going to become the AEW World Champion, is he not? Yes, absolutely. And I'm sure Jung- I wouldn't bet any money on it. And then yeah, I'm sure yeah, Jungle yeah. Boy will be out there to celebrate with him when Luchasaurus wins. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And you, what do you have on I today? have got my Purveyor of Violence. Oh. John Moxley the moniker. Shirt. The moniker fits Moxley well. It is. Yeah. Very well. So, too bad uh too bad he's out and about cuz uh, you know that hideous attack that he had against him for the weekend, but Jericho now uh, announced that Sammy is the hero of the match, and the crowd chants Sammy. They talk about the pinnacle, and it 
still being far from over. And Santana Ortiz talk about FTR. And Hager challenges Wardlow to an MMA cage fight. And he says it's two, two weeks, right? Okay, yeah. you, you made a face. What do you want to say about that? I, I heard him say that, and I was like, are you shitting me? Like, are we really going to act like we're going to have a real MMA match in an AEW event? You Come were. On. I actually thought that was cool. I was like, all right. Oh, really? Yeah. I I, I don't see how this is going to be real. I mean, it's going to be mean, fake as hell, but it's like. Yeah, like, that's what right. gets me. It's like, it's not going to be a real MMA yeah, match. Like, like, I, I want to see what it, I want to see. It's, it's You're right. It's not going to be a real MMA match. It's like, I want to see what, the, I want to see what the hell they're going to do. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and see what they come up with. But I heard that. I'm like, you got to be shitting me, dude. <laughs> just, just say a street fight or something. You know, that would make more sense, but whatever. All right. We'll, Jer- we'll go with it. And Jericho says the war isn't over and he needs to get even with MJF. He's going to beat MJF and the inner circle never forgives and the inner circle never effing forgets. So in the surprise of the night, nobody came out to attack the inner circle after this was over. This had a happy ending. Yeah, I was kind of surprised. I, not kind of. I was very surprised. You know, you expect these types of things to happen, right? The Pinnacle's going to have their answer immediately, right? But no, they didn't. So, I guess next week we'll find out the Pinnacle's answer. Yep. So then they had a couple of video packages to show what happened at Double or Nothing. How Orange had Kenny beat twice, but then Callus interfered. And the best friends were pissed off about this, rightfully so. And then Orange says, it's not over. And then Marvez teleports to, like, the so, some kind of black... The feed office, some where the kind of through, yeah. elite black site where they've got all the monitors and all everything going on. And Alice says there's this conspiracy and they're gonna blow the lid off of it next week. And then they sing the Jungle Boy song, which this is part was awesome. Which was pretty good because uh, the crowd didn't sing it. Did you notice this? Yeah, the crowd did not sing the Jungle Boy song. It was like, what the hell is wrong with this crowd? So up next, anyway, it was Jungle Boy and Christian Cage versus Private Party. And Private Party is wrestling in business attire now. Not a fan. What do you think of this match, though? Uh, it was pretty good. It was um, it was actually better than I thought it would be. I don't know why I had low expectations for this match. I'm not sure. I I know everybody in this match is is capable of putting on a great match, but for whatever reason, I just wasn't into it beforehand. But it, it piqued my interest. It was good. Uh, did you uh did you have anything that you thought was gonna happen? Before this match started? No. Nothing, okay. nothing in particular. All what, right. what did you think? What so, was your on this one? I've watched wrestling for far too long. And when a good guy loses a match he guaranteed to win, and then he tag team with the guy who beat him in that match that he guaranteed was he going to win, he was going to win, mm. it's usually a sign that said good guy is going to betray the guy who it's beat him turn. and screw mm. him three ways from Sunday. But it didn't happen. Christian is a upstanding citizen. And private party... That would have been awesome. I would have loved to. No, Christian is up. a good sounds... guy. <laughs> it sounds messed up. I'd love to see the bad guys <laughs> win. But what I'm saying is it would have been a nice, it been a nice twist. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they... The private party mocks the five-second pose Edge and Christian used to do. They go for the gin and juice, but they both get countered. And then when when, uh, Jungle Boy countered Mark Quinn, he landed right on his head. So this was the second guy in the second match who just fell right on top of his head. But it, it seemed like he was okay. Jungle Boy put on the snare trap, and they get the win. So I was like, oh, never mind. I guess he's Christian Cage is not going to betray him. And this was the only match of the night that didn't have interference too, which is weird because Matt Hardy's job is to interfere in private parties matches. And then Matt hit the twist of fate on Christian on the ramp. So we're yeah, trans. Right. I didn't even think of that. There was no interference, huh? Yeah. Matt Hardy didn't really Matt Hardy didn't interfere. Shot. Yeah. So we're right. going back to 1999 with Matt Hardy versus Christian Cage. Those were the days. Those were the days. Yep. Anything so, else I mean, you want to add about this one? At least, 
at least the, that's what everybody tells me because you know i was like three years old in 1999 so our ages keep changing every week apparently yeah they do don't they uh shifting timeline just like marvel yeah. you know mm. yeah we gotta go with the flow you know whatever works so they got a uh, taz <laughs> this was i don't know <laughs> so taz says hangman got lucky he says uh, he tells Hangman to get someone from the Dark Order and they'll take on Cage and Hobbs. And Ricky Starks walked away and he just said, oh, well, if anybody, you, you know, you want to scout Hobbs and Brian Cage, they're going to be on elevation and beat the crap out of somebody. This is one of the not this is one of the weaker Team Taz interviews because it's like, what were they watching? Hangman didn't get lucky. And why are they yeah. like? Why are they so pissed off? Like they're always, they're always pissed off at people for winning the match against them, which is like what they were supposed to do. Yeah, <laughs> especially when the odds are against that person too. Yeah, right? it's like it's like Taz plays the victim when Taz is actually. I'm sorry, Team Taz is actually the aggressors. Yeah, you know, it's like we're the victims here. Bunch it's like, of it's more like Team Gaslight or something. Yeah. That's uh, it's weird that um, that Cage is still with Team Taz considering the <laughs> events of what happened. Right, he's just yeah. there, like like nothing happened. So. I know, and 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 it looked like Starks, oddly enough, was the one that had the most um, you know, uh, I guess the the most pent up feelings about what happened at Double or Nothing when he didn't even he didn't even wrestle at Double or Nothing. <laughs> it was weird. It was odd. I don't know. Not not the best team test segment. I agree with you on that. It was funny because Ricky Starks, but not the best. <laughs> and all he did was walk away. Yeah, he just looked at he just looked at Brian. And he's like, and he just gave him the dirtiest look and said, "F this place." Yeah. So Shivani's out there and he calls out Sting and Darby, and this is the only time the crowd gave a shit about this this whole show because Sting is the man and. They love Sting. They chant him for Sting. They chant, you still got it. Like, this this is the only time the crowd actually livened up this entire show. And Sting says he'll never forget Double or Nothing. It stands up with anything he's ever done in this business. And then Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page appear on the screen. And I have to channel Miro. I... So didn't I didn't I predict this? Didn't I say that this was gonna be the feud that never ends that replaced the best friends versus Miro and Kip? This is just never gonna end now. Yeah, unfortunately. Was it this? I, I, I thought you said that about the QT and the Cody feud too. Maybe maybe I was just thinking that because that looks like it's never gonna I end. I think it too. was this one. Pretty sure yeah. it was this one. We got two feuds that are never gonna end, unfortunately. So they And they're both not great. So this was like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Scorpio Sky says, and Ethan Page says, Sting carry Darby. They say he's a bitch, and they tell Darby to get a partner that's not Sting. And then Darby was going to say something, but then they cut him off. And then JR just says, Darby's speechless. That was a pretty good save. But Yeah. This Sting carry Darby? Didn't he win the TNT Championship without Sting? Didn't he yes. beat Scorpio Sky cleanly without yes. Sting? Yes. So what is this what is this narrative that Sting is carrying Darby? Like do they actually believe this shit? Is that what we're supposed to, is that why they're bad guys? Maybe maybe they're so delusional that's their whole character arc, I guess. Cause that's the only thing that I can imagine would be uh, I guess a saving grace on why they're behaving this way. So they're, yeah, like you said, this is the stupidest angle. Like they're what? just mad at Darby. They don't want to win the championship from Miro because I thought it was like they wanted to. One of them wanted to win the TNT championship, but no, they just yeah. they just don't like Darby, which is stupid. Yeah, I know. We talked about this a couple weeks back. It's like we were both wondering, like, what is their angle here? They're beating up Darby, but only one of them can win the belt, and yeah. who's gonna like? Who's going to be the one to fall on the sword and say, hey, no, you, you can win the belt. And it's like, that wasn't even their plan. Yeah. <laughs> their plan was just... They, they just don't Darby. like Darby. Yeah. Like, why? I, I don't understand. And their whole, their whole gimmick from when they started out was they were both overlooked. So, but yet, Darby is responsible for that somehow. Yeah. And 
nothing better to get the recognition they deserve by beating up Darby instead of winning a championship. Yeah, the more we talk about it, the the dumber it sounds every time. And it it's just I I don't know much about Paige, um, but even I can say I think he's being wasted on this angle. I know Scorpio's being wasted on this angle. This is terrible. <laughs> This is horrible. Like, it's so dumb. I, they have what, I don't know what you'd use the terminology, because this is, I'm I'm kind of, I'm kind of coming at a point where I just, you know, got to talk about my inexperience with these kind of ter- terminology here, but they don't have heat. It's just stupid. Like, you know, like how, like, MJF yeah. has heat, uh, you know, you know, even Hardy has heat, like, you know, they're bad guys, you boo them. But- like, this is dumb. Yeah, they at least have, like, a, a believable purpose. Matt Hardy wants to make money. He wants to use Private Party to make him money. MJF wants to be the GOAT, and he thinks Jericho's the GOAT, so he wants to surpass Jericho. Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page say they're, they're sick of being overlooked, so they're going to take it out on the skateboard kid. Like, what? Yeah. I don't understand. But, I was really hoping this would end up to double or nothing, but I was you've, you're, doubly wrong. You're dead wrong, so dead wrong. we got to move yep. on. Giovanni's in the ring, and he's with the, the Dark Slash Elevation bad guy crew. And so I saw this earlier online. Apparently, uh, McDonald's donated like 1,500 Big Mac coupons to celebrate her winning the title. But for some what? reason, but for some reason on Dynamite they kept saying burger coupons. So if you looked at the burgers, they're actually they were all Big Macs. For yeah, some reason, like familiar. wouldn't McDonald's yeah. be like, "You better fucking plug that it was Big Macs on the show," you know? Like, but they just kept calling them burgers for some reason. I don't know. Maybe TNT has like Burger King sponsorship or something. I have no idea what's going on. But anyway, they kept That's weird. See, I never read that. I didn't know. I was like, why are they giving away randomly 1500 burger coupons? Yeah. Okay. So Brit is out there. And at first she tells, you know, like I got gifted all these burger coupons and everybody gets one. Go check under your seat. And they show the crowd and nobody is checking under the seat for this free burger coupon. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this crowd? And I was like, but then Brit goes, Oh wait, I have all of them because she did it herself. And then I noticed that Nyla Rose is just standing there in the back. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Shouldn't Nyla's character, in character anyway, shouldn't character-wise Nyla just destroy Britt right now and tell her she wants a shot at the AEW championship? But no. And then Reba, and she tells Reba and Tony, you know, get burgers. We're all gonna, we're gonna do the shield pose with the burgers for some reason. And then Nyla, okay, she, and then Nyla is like, whacks them out of her hands. And she loses it. And then she yeah. tosses all the burgers in the stands, and she pops the balloons, and she leaves. And I was like, finally. So, Yeah, she had a sour look on her face the whole time. And I was thinking the same thing as you. I was like, why is Nyla out there? Nyla must be pissed. It's like, what am I doing out here? Why, like, yeah, I was, the entire time I was belt. like, why isn't she just, like, attacking Brit and be like, hey, this is, like, a perfect opportunity to attack Brit and then declare that she wants a shot at the title. But I guess, you know. You know what? Maybe Nyla's vegan or something. I just don't oh, like... you think that's why she... I don't like, like these burgers, and she's not a fan of Mylar balloons either. I don't know. <laughs> that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Get it. I get it. But <laughs> it was cool for what it was, I suppose. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if, if it's actually Brit versus Nyla as the next, or possibly, maybe not the next, but soon to be, um, you know, title matchup. Who's going to be the bad guy? You know? Brit. Uh, Brit? You think Nyla will be the face in that match? I think they're both going to be bad guys, but then I think mm-hmm. Brit will be more of one. Mm-hmm. Interesting. We'll see. I do like that AEW doesn't always follow the traditional face versus heel angle. I will give them a credit on that. You can have two heels, two so, faces. So, Marvez teleports to Eddie Kingston. And before Eddie Kingston even says anything, Penta and Pac burst in and they're huffing and puffing. They're out of breath and they're like, We don't want your help. Stay the F out of our way. And Eddie Kingston's like, 
Well, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Let that marinate in your brains for a bit. <laughs> and then he walks off. And then it's just like, so was Penta and Pac looking for Eddie Kingston for over an hour and just <laughs> yeah. found him? Only in front of the camera. Yeah, because they're, yeah. they're like out of breath. It's like they were running around. Where's Eddie Kingston? We got to tell him off. Eddie Kingston. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 it was so short, but I just loved... I guess I just love any promos. The The whole mannerisms and everything he said was just perfect. Let that marinate in your heads a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Eddie's, Eddie's still great. He's so, so good. So we've got the Bunny versus Red Velvet. This was my match of the night. Because this was... Uh, even though there was interference, but remember I said I'm not going to care about that. Anymore. But this is the only match that I didn't know who was going to win. And, yeah. Really? This was the only match you didn't know who was going to win, huh? Well, I'm not the, being sarcastic. Well, I, I was I was up till now. Who was win. Up till okay. now. Yeah. So, I didn't know who was going to win Jungle Boy. Even though I figured they no, would. We've, well, I thought, I thought Christian was going to betray him, but I I still think they were gonna. I still think they were. It was gonna be something like where Jungle Boy got the win, and then they'd be all celebrating, and Christian would be like jealous that he's taking all the spotlight, and then like give him the kill switch, and that's what I thought was gonna happen. You, what happened? Seem to have lost my friend. Conked out. So, all right, we've got him back. He's he's okay. Not today. Yeah, I'll... I didn't get in. I didn't get attacked from behind or anything. It wasn't interference. I'm, I'm good. Good. My guy must be late then. <laughs> wow. Uh, I always I always figured I always figured you you had a hit out on me, but now it's been confirmed. Yeah. Yeah, good thing my guys are always on time. Any minute now. Any minute now. Yeah, we were talking about the bunny versus Red Velvet and how this was really good. Red Velvet, I just think, has a real good intensity about her. She's, she's very good at making it feel like she's actually in a fight for her life for real. You know? That's, yeah, that's a good way to put it, actually. She, um, she hits the ground running, that's for sure. And everything she does is at like, you know, the full speed. So, and, and, and you know, not dangerous. Like, you know, yeah. you can go in there full speed and just take off somebody's head. And they're like, that's a dangerous worker. Like, she's she's great at what she does, uh, considering how fast she's moving. Yeah, she just so. has an extra gear to where it just feels like she, she, in a way, she reminds me of Bret Hart, where, like, it feels like, it feels real almost, where... Because she just has this intensity about her that it it feels like she's actually fighting for real, even though we know she's not. But before the match, they show clips from Dark, where the bunny hit Big Swole with some nucks and got a victory over Big Swole. So why the hell is why the hell is Red Velvet wrestling her and not Big Swole? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I guess because they're friends. I I don't know. Yeah. Like Big Swole did a company. So Big Swole Red and Kylan King come out with uh, Red Velvet, and so yeah, as always, the interference. The blade gives Bunny the the they call it the knuckle duster, and then uh, apparently Red Velvet's friends have never seen professional wrestling before. They jump on the ring apron and they distract the ref. Not knowing that this would give the bunny the perfect opportunity to knock Red Velvet out. But Red Velvet ducks. She gets out of the way. And then she kicks the bunny right in the face. And it's called Just Desserts. And Red Velvet wins. So all's, Can't a, stop. all's <laughs> right in the world. What? Can't stop laughing at your comment about, I guess they've never seen professional wrestling right? before. I mean, every good guy is like, anytime the bad guy grabs a weapon or does something underhanded, the good guy jumps up and is like, Hey, hey, and all it does is distract the ref so yeah, that the ref the doesn't the see opportunity. for the bad guy to go hit him with the weapon or whatever. They're literally helping the bad guy win by doing this, right? Yeah. It's like, 
Don't distract the ref. That's what the bad guys have. That's to do. what they want. Yeah. Fool. <sighs> yep. But this was a good match, other than the interference. But I still liked it because I just liked it. Damn. Shit. <laughs> So really, got, uh, uh, yeah, what? there wasn't really that much standout matches on this Dynamite. I mean, the yeah. see the reason why I'm so the Bucks and versus Penta and and Pac would have been better. It's just that I expect when I see them, I don't expect bullshit finishes. So just when it it when it ruins the whole match for me, just like the three way on on the pay per view. Like, I expect so much from Kenny Omega, from Pac, and from Orange Cassidy. So when there's a bullshit finish that ruins the entire match for me. You know? Yeah, I get it. But so the Bunny versus Red Velvet, it's a little bit lower stakes. Let's be mm -hmm. honest. So yeah. the interference doesn't bother me as much. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, it does. The work should speak for itself, right? Interference, like I said earlier, and like we've said before, just takes away from it. It's like, I don't know. It's like if you had like a, a race of like the top sprinters in the world, but then one sprinter's manager takes out the other guy yeah. at the end. It's like, what's the point? What's the point of even running then? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. So then we've got uh, Evo Uno in the back, and they say they're celebrating John Silver's birthday. And they said, Tony Khan was going to give me a TNT title shot, but I'm not cleared. So I'm giving the present to you, Evo Uno. And they're like, yay. It's like, Tony Khan. Feel good moment. So Tony Khan gives out title shots as a for birthdays. birthday. I guess, yeah. I it just plays into the fact that rankings matter. In I was gonna. There, I was like, uh, there's something about rankings in this, but I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna touch it. So we've something better. This actually was the. This next part was the best part of the show. Miro. The Miro promo. This was the best part of the show. His entire <laughs> interview was memorable quotes. He says, I, I want to thank God, but a special shout out to my wife for being hot. <laughs> he says, you know, Evil Uno's challenging me now, and it makes no sense because I'm bigger, stronger, and undefeated. And he's going to make this a teachable moment for everybody in the locker room. Don't come after me when you think you can win. You come after me when you're sure you can survive. I was like, this guy is so friggin good so at this He's, um okay go, ahead. go no you go you go no i was gonna say he is the words i'm looking for i guess is he is just the right amount of in control and unhinged at the same time if yeah that makes sense that didn't make sense yeah like he's scary but at the same time like he's in control of it too like it's like yeah, he could turn on a dime but still be fully aware of everything he needs to do He's crazy. Yeah, it's it's perfect. He's he's a perfect character. So, they announced for June 26th, Kenny is going to defend against Jungle Boy. Next week, Miro is going to defend the TNT Championship against Evo Uno. The Bucks and Cutler are going to take on Pac, Penta, and Eddie. And then Hangman and Ten are going to take Hobbs and Cage. So, at this part of the show, there's about, like, a little bit more than 15 minutes left. We just saw the women's match. I'm like, what the hell is the main event of this show? And they say, up next, Nick Camarado versus Dustin Rhodes in a bull rope match. And I was like, this is not the main event, is it? <laughs> and they cut to Justin Roberts and he says, this is your main event of the evening. And I was like, did I travel to an alternate dimension? Am I really watching Nick Camarado versus <laughs> Dustin Rhodes? As the main event of Dynamite, am yes, I am I on the are. right planet? Where am I? I must yeah, be this? I must be dreaming. This is, but yeah, this was the main event, and it was yeah. it was pretty good. It was actually, I have to admit, another surprise. Yeah. Uh, Dustin's a great wrestler, and I guess Camarado is okay from what I've seen. He's a big dude. Uh, but he he worked. They both they both worked their asses off on this one. Yep. A lot of crazy spots. I think Camarado got cut the hard way, huh? I don't think he cut himself. Yeah. Did he? Dustin got power bombed through the table and hit his head. 
Yes, I know. I saw that too. Like, oh my god, you could see his head bounce from the uh, yeah from the far end of the table when he hit. Like, I'm sure there was something. Uh, I'm sure either the bunny or red velvet hit her head really, their head really hard. But I must have missed it. But every match had somebody getting landing or getting their head just destroyed. Wow. Like, damn, how are these people alive? I wonder sometimes. It's, it's insane. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, the finish of this one was Solo gets interfering. Oh no, th no, there was no inter. Well, there, well, he did interfere, but it wasn't the finish. And then Colton Gunn came out and fought him off. And then uh, one of the better parts of this match was Excalibur says, "Well, how he's gonna deal with this?" And then Dustin gives Nick a big nut kick. That was pretty good. Yeah. And then funny. Dustin goes up top. He hits the bulldog, and then he hog ties Camarado and wins. But then there's two minutes left. So I was like, a go goes or somebody's got to come out and just beat up Dustin, right? But no, that was it. That was the end of Dynamite. Out of There's yeah. always somebody at the end attacking somebody else. But not tonight. It's just yeah, Dustin Rhodes. Odd. So I was like, that was odd. I, I, there, I must be in the wrong timeline. <laughs> there's something going on. Pretty much every dynamite we've had in the last what six or seven weeks has had somebody come out at the end to attack somebody someone, else, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. This was the first one I can think of in like two months that somebody hasn't come out and like attack someone at the end for whatever reason. So, and so this was another another one of the best parts of the night because this crowd has sucked ape shit this entire night except for when Sting came out. And then Dustin goes into the crowd and he yells, "Come on!" <laughs> to the crowd, and I'm I'm surprised he didn't swear. And then he's yelling, "Come on!" And you see all the people standing around him are like, <laughs> like uh, that sums up this entire dynamite. This crowd was not having it. They just it's good enough. Huh? Yeah, they were watching like they were watching the Westminster Dog Show or something. I don't know. Man, do you remember how many times that used to preempt uh, Raw? <laughs> that's why I brought it up. Yeah. I, I used to I hate that freaking dog show. I figured that's why you brought it up. I couldn't tell you because I don't know what it was. This is way back before the internet was around and you could just look this up. But I remember so many times I would turn it on and be like, oh, Raw's coming on next. And it's like, tonight we bring you the Westminster Abbey dog show. And it's like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> And Raw would never say it the week before, saying, "Hey, uh, you know, next week we got the Westminster Dog Show." So, which is weird because Sorry. Raw was like the number one show on cable, like for all of the times, and then they yeah. just preempted for this effing dog show. It's like, who the hell like 10 even? Of the viewership who even that? watches this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like man, now, I don't even. Out. Now I don't even get to watch the first five minutes of Silk Stockings after. <laughs> uh yeah considering we knew about that show when we were six seven <laughs> some of us mature a little quicker than us. oh Ooh. really nice. <laughs> but anyway that's it for dynamite is there anything else you want to say about it no i guess we got another friday dynamite next week huh it looks this like it. Like a regular occurrence, huh? You might as well just call it Rampage already. They might as well. Yeah, geez. Friday night Rampage next week. Well, it's not, uh, it's not our fault. No, I know. I know. But it's like, it's, uh. And it's not their fault either. Yeah. It's just funny. It's like, it's not really dynamite anymore because it's like three weeks in a row now. It's on Friday. So I guess we'll see everybody on Friday. Yep. So that about wraps it up for us. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for checking us out. There's all kinds of buttons that you can press to support us. Please do so if you feel so inclined. And as always, be good, stay safe, and we will see you next time. Take care, guys.